<laughs> well, I am not so famous and not really the cheetah man of Africa, but I'll claim both this morning. Thank you very much, James, and well done for pulling off what I'm told is the most sensational start to a safari live safari ever. Awesome stuff, and I'm jealous I did not get to hear James singing the song. I'm glad it wasn't me singing. I'm not much of a singer, so that would have been quite painful for you. My name is Scott Dyson. I'm teamed up with Craig on camera. We've been out all night. That's why I'm draped in a blanket to try and keep warm. It was fairly chilly, and these five cheetah kept us quite busy. Now, what was interesting is that their behavior last night was very different, and even though so far this morning has been very different to the behavior that I've experienced with them in the past. So usually that by now they would be on the move, and they wouldn't have been so active last night, but it's possibly because of the moon that was almost full that caused them to move just about until 2.30 in the moving morning, up and down. And maybe, just like me, they too are also quite cold and just enjoying the warmth from the rising sun. They are not here alone. There's a few other animals that have been following them and harassing them all night, namely hyena. One of which has actually decided to, the one on the right, has decided to break off a bone from a very old carcass and just start nibbling on that. And I'm very surprised at how old this carcass is that it's decided to feed on. Anyway, it's making a plan while it waits for these cheetah to try and make a kill. And then, of course, it will try and steal the kill from the cheetah. There's another scavenger not too far further to the left of these hyena. And I'm guessing that what has happened is the little vulture that we can see here now saw these hyena and expected them possibly to be on a fresher kill and that's why they swooped in to see if there was anything worth nibbling on but sadly for this this hooded vulture there's going to be nothing that its beak can manage to break off this one's quite an interesting looking individual it's got a very white throat which i haven't really noticed before on them not sure if you guys agree. There's the carcass that the hyena broke a rib off. And that's why the hooded vulture is just coming to take a closer look just to make sure there's no little titbits. Which, like I said, I don't think it is going to find any because the carcass is simply too old for its tiny little beak to be able to work off any little scraps. Wonderful stuff.